metro system or subway, where signs are easy and quick to read, and it allows our users to find the way quickly. We call it metro because it's modern and clean. It's also fast and it's in motion. It's about content and typography, and it's entirely authentic. Live tiles are shortcuts to apps, and they implement all these ideas. Live tiles help you surf your content up. They're live, animated, and in motion. Since we'll be discussing live tiles, we'll also mention push notifications to update the tiles remotely. And we'll have examples available on MSDN, Microsoft Developer Network, that bring together all these elements, live tiles, push notifications, web and Azure services, to update tiles on users' phones. Simply go to msdn.microsoft.com and search for live tile and push notifications examples. Live tiles give users a glanceable experience so that they can immediately see things they care most about, their friends, weather, movies, stocks, or game score. And clearly, given the size of the phone, the icon is simply not enough. So tiles are much bigger than the icons, and they are in motion, they are animated. They take advantage of more surface of your screen to serve your users with more content. And this is how we implement one of the metro principles designed for the form factor. I'll show you some examples of live tiles on my own phone. In built-in maps, you can pin a location to the start screen. When I move to a new place, I use this feature a lot to learn about the area. In the Office app, you can pin documents to the start screen. Let's look at the MSN movies. I can pin MSN movies to the front screen, or I can pin a theater, or I can pin MSN money stocks, and I can also pin individual stocks to the start screen. Game developers often underestimate the importance of tiles. I developed a few card games, and notice how I pin them to the start screen, and they show my score and achievements. My users love it. These are all good examples on how you can use live tiles in your apps. Be creative. Tiles are very powerful, and remember that the end user is always in control. So what can the user do with the tiles? Users can pin tiles to the start screen. And it also shows how important your app is to the user. If users don't like your app or consider it unimportant, they can also unpin the app from the start screen. And guess what may be the next action? That's right, uninstalling the app. So we better have informative, entertaining tiles. If you've seen the big Windows Phone event in New York City, where Microsoft built a six-story Windows Phone in Herald Square, you can imagine how creative you can be with live tiles. We had the actual live tiles of popular Windows Phone apps. We had musicians playing live in the huge live tiles. And that's exactly the message. Be creative. Think about how you can use tiles in your own apps. Now, let's talk about building tiles into your apps. Tiles are shortcuts to apps. They can be static or dynamic. There are two sizes of tiles, large and small. Currently, large tiles are reserved for first-party apps, so your tile will be 173 by 173 pixels. Still, this is much bigger than the icons. Tiles have a fixed set of properties. In fact, we have an XML schema that defines live tiles. Windows Phone 7.5 supports tile flip. Developers can write to the back and the front of the tile. Windows Phone automatically animates between front and back. Now, here's a little trick. Make the background transparent and the main icon white. This will play equally well with dark and light themes because Windows Phone will automatically adjust the color to the theme. There are two types of tiles, application tiles and secondary tiles. The big difference is that the application tile can only be pinned to the start screen when the user taps and holds the application name in the application list. But even if the user has not pinned the application tile to start, it can be updated programmatically. The secondary tile is new to Windows Phone 7.5. The secondary tile can be created programmatically. The application then uses the tile API create method to create a tile on start. Because the UI will navigate to start when the new secondary tile is created, only one secondary tile can be created at a time. To fully take advantage of this new multi-tile experience, you, as authors of your apps, need to think about what part of your app may be pinned to the start screen. Think about users that are now truly engaged with your app and need a quick access to parts of your app. For example, I love skiing, and my weather app is pinned to the start screen with tiles of all surrounding skiing areas. This certainly increases the amount of real estate the app takes on the start screen, and it also shows how important your app is to the user. So now you know how the tiles are created and how users interact with them. So let's explore how tiles are updated to make them live.
And I'm going to talk about different strategies because there are several ways to update tiles and each of these ways have a set of constraints that as developers we should be aware of. The most important criteria to think about is what properties and how frequently you want to update. Remember that tiles have two sides, back and front. Depending on the site, they have title content, counter, and background image properties. Also the frequency of updates is important, whether we want to update the tiles every hour, every day, or more frequently. The easiest but also the most restricted way to update tiles is by using Tile Schedule or Shell Tile Schedule class. You can only update the image of your tile and that image must be remote. In other words, it has to be on some web server. And the minimal update interval for Shell Tile Schedule is one hour in Windows Phone. A much more flexible way of updating tiles is through the background agent. Background agents are available since Windows Phone 7.5 and they're more universal. So we can use them for many background tasks, not just for tile updates. But with the background agent, we create an additional assembly in our project by using a background agent Visual Studio project template. This assembly will run independently of your app. In fact, your main app doesn't have to be running in order for the tile to be updated from a background agent. You can update all tile properties from a background agent and the frequency can also be much higher, 30 minutes. Background agents also don't require any external infrastructure or servers to update tiles. And the third way of updating tiles is through push notifications. Push notifications provide a very powerful mechanism to send the updates to the phone. Unlike the background agent, which runs locally on the phone, push notifications are server initiated. They are designed to preserve battery and improve user experience. Your app doesn't need to be active. The phone will update the tile automatically once the proper notification is received. To rocket your app to the top, you may want to think about adding another differentiator. And I encourage you to look at the search extensibility. This feature is called App Connect. Another important differentiator for Windows Phone apps is fast application switching to make the user experience even smoother. Our Microsoft team wishes you good luck with your app. Okay, on this demo, uh, I'll show you how to use live tiles. I'll just uh, go ahead and just launch the application itself. So when my emulator comes up, I can see uh, three buttons, and this is what uh, we're going to be doing in this demo today. So the first button changes the application tile. And um, if I um, go into this page, it opens the page which has some properties for the tile that I can set. So one of the properties is the title, uh, the background image, the count, and also remember that every tile has, um, has uh, two sides the back and the front. So I can also set the back title, back background title, and back content. And if I set the application tile properties now, uh, nothing happens because my application is not really, um, doesn't really have the tile in the front screen. So I can go back and uh, pin my tile sample to start. So when it's pinned, you see that the uh, tile actually reflects the properties that I set on it. So it has the title, it has the back content, and it has the back title. So let's go back to our application and um, let's set the secondary tile. So the secondary tile is actually uh, a feature only available in Windows Phone 7.5. And um, when we set a secondary tile, uh, it will automatically create a tile in the front screen. So I can click and notice what happens. This is the user experience um, that uh, the, tile, uh, the tile actually implements. When I set the property on the tile when I create the tile. It actually navigates away from the application uh, to the front screen and then it creates the tile. So many times developers ask me uh, if I can create multiple tiles at the same time and the answer is no. You have to create one tile at a time. And um, as a bonus, I'll show you another um, example of how to generate all those custom tiles. So if you are not happy with the set of the properties that we have on the tiles, you can actually generate the tiles. And let me walk through the uh, um, uh, debugger here to show you how it's done. So the generate tile method uh, uses a writable bitmap image. And in the writable bitmap image, we use some image as a source and then and then as I, as I get into the method, you can see that I'm setting properties uh, to, to generate 
to generate what's going to be on the tile. So basically, it's generating one big image for me. And uh, let me just set the uh, breakpoint inside this method. So I'm getting into the image. So at this point, uh, you can see that I'm setting some properties such as, for example, I'm writing uh, text directly into the image using the, uh, using the writable bitmap class. And then I'm saving the tile in the folder called shared shell content. And this is where um, the, um, uh, the image is going to be stored for the tile. So this is the final result of the tile that I have. So we used three methods in this example. Uh, in the first method, we created, uh, we updated the application tile. The application tile always exists. In the second example, we created a secondary tile, and you can create multiple secondary tile tiles. And in the third final example, we generated a custom tile. And this concludes my tile example.